Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and in today's video we are going to be doing another tutorial. So first of all we are going to be doing a bit of a build guide in the vehicle assembly building for the uh, new Glen Rocket uh, which is being uh, developed by Blue Origin. Then we're going to take it out to the launch pad and we're going to be doing a little flight with it and then I'm going to be doing a little bit of a walkthrough on how to uh, do a boost back burn and to land the booster or the bottom stage back at the uh, Kerbal Space Center. Um, Blue Origin is planning on reusing the bottom stage so we are going to be doing that in this video. I think if you want to stay tuned it'd be pretty good because uh, there are some um, some cool tips I have and this booster can actually do some pretty cool stuff so uh, if you're interested in that uh, yeah feel free to uh, stay tuned till the end. Um, so we're going to be building this rocket from the top down. So we just started by building that fairing and then we're going to just do the internals of the upper stage or not really the upper stage or the controls for the upper stage. We're going to be adding some reaction wheels, a probe core, some batteries and some monoprop you'll see in a second. This build is 100% fully stock. Um, I don't even have Kerbal Engineer installed yet. Um, that's because in 1.11, Kerbal Engineer is kind of a little bit weird and not worky. But um, uh, yeah, so completely stock. The DLCs are going to be required, though. Um, you probably could get away with not having the making history, but uh, breaking ground is required because we're going to be doing stuff with robotics. Um, uh, we, we, we really only use making history for the engine plates and engines. Uh, we use the Wolfhound engine. So uh, you can ba you can basically kind of get away with not using making history, but like I said, breaking ground is pretty important. Uh, if you want to follow along, that uh, you can obviously, or you can watch it for this entertainment value. And I do have the, the craft file in the description if you want to just uh, download the craft instead. Um, the craft files haven't been working lately, so um, I believe it should start working now. It's a problem because I had tweak scale installed, and I don't have tweak scale installed in my 1.11 version. So it should be it should be all good to, uh, and they should work. So let me know if they still don't work because I'll be very upset if they still don't work. But um, we're just building a upper stage now. We just did one of those uh, smaller 3.75 meter fuel tanks, and then we did two wolf engines with an engine plate obviously on top of them for upper stage engines uh, blue origin uses three uh, b sorry uh, two be three u engines as their upper stage engine we're using our wolfhound for the analog so for the bottom stage we're going to be taking a those uh, small 3.75 meter fuel tanks or those medium sized ones and then we're going to be flipping them over uh, like so you can see to make it look a little bit more like a clean design you can see i have those like the black stripe instead there there's only three big black stripes instead of like six smaller black stripes. I think that looks better, but it's just personal preference. Now we're going to be making a little engine skirt uh, area on the uh, rocket. A few people have been asking how you close a fairing. Um, uh, like, so you'll see me do it in a second. You'll see the fairing will just kind of end. It won't have to have a nose there. I did it right there. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, when you have it on that, um, when you have it where you want it to be, basically, where you want the fairing to terminate, you want to hold down alt and then left click. And then it will stop. And then, uh, yeah, that's how you do that. And then I recolored the, uh, 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 blah, the fairing silver just because uh, that's how the real uh, one works or the real one looks. Um, now we're just going to be doing the controls for the bottom stage. We're going to be doing some reaction wheels on and then we're going to put a probe core and uh, batteries just like the other one. Uh, the bottom stage I'm not going to put any uh, monoprop on because we're going to use the Werner engines which actually use liquid fuel and oxidizer um, too because they have a little more control. So uh, there we go the uh, batteries. And then we're going to put down an engine plate after the batteries which we're going to be um, what we mount our seven engines on. Blue Origin uses the BE4 engine which uh, they're developing themselves and um, so in KSP we're going to be using uh, the skipper engine as the analog. You're going to want to make sure you have uh, the small the end the version of the skipper where you don't have that uh, big stuff on top of it. You know I think you know what I mean. Um, you want the uh, skippers to not really extend below the fairing and uh, so our mine did initially so I'm just going to remove one of the reaction wheels and then now it looks all nice and dandy. I also do kind of uh, move the engines away from um, themselves a little bit because in the real rocket the um, the engines kind of take up the entire area around that engine skirt uh, kind of looking thing. I think I'm calling it an engine skirt. I'm not really sure if that that yeah that is what it is. Um, that, that, I know what I'm talking about, obviously. So while I do that, I would like to quickly do some very quick plugs. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, you know, uh, I, I would like to say thank you. We just had 2,000 subscribers the other day. That was pretty epic, and we're still growing crazily. So thank you. And if you're enjoying the content, yeah, subscribe button, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, Discord, yeah, just the link in the description, right? Discord. I have the best Discord. I don't know. Do I have a good Discord? I don't know. I haven't been as active on the Discord recently as I wanted to be, but uh, hey, I'll try to. I'll try to get more because I'm starting to drop in my ranks in the Discord. Like I'm only number four right now. I used to be number two, so we've got to get back up there. Either way, um, 
Oh my gosh, like, comment, subscribe, notification. Okay, so let's get back to the tutorial. So I just put some of those Werner engines on the bottom and the top of the uh, second or the bottom stage. There, that's going to mainly help us maintain stability during our uh, descent with the booster and going to help us do our flip maneuver, which we'll get to a little bit more on when we uh, get to our flight. And then we just put some of those uh, RCS thrusters on the top of the bottom of the second stage. We don't really use them, but they're kind of a just in case. Now it's going to be time to build the bottom fins of the... Um, of the uh, New Glenn. New Glenn has uh, similarly to Starship, it has two sets of fins. It has some bottom fins and some top fins. It might be a good idea, uh, even if you're following along with this tutorial, to um, have a picture of the New Glenn uh, next to you, just in case you want to do a little bit different design than me. Just, just do what you feel is best. So I'm just going to be raising those fins up just a little bit so I have a nice uh, area to work. So my design for the fins is basically, we can see I just took those um, those one wings and then I put them and then I put one of the structural wing things and then I took another wing and I flipped it over and then I put it on the bottom. And uh, that's what I did for the fins. Now in the real rocket, the, the uh, bottom part of those fins, they do kind of uh, extend into the engine skirt area. So I'm just going to move them down like so. Um, another thing to keep note of is um, the um, if you ha if you use the uh, wing type A, which is what I used for the um, for the wing for the bottom fins, they're actually a little bit too wide. Uh, what you really want is both of the fins added up together, uh, the length of them to equal about the width of the vehicle. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be clipping them just slightly into the fuel tank, uh, just so they can look a little bit more a little bit more realistic, because otherwise they're just a they extend a little bit too far out normally. Um, these fins uh, on the real rocket, just like the real rocket, obviously, they do not have any sort of rotation that I can know of. They are just static fins. Um, so we're not going to be doing any sort of robotic hinges or anything on them. So we're just going to be leaving them static. Um, I have not found any anything that would suggest that they are rotating. So uh, if they, if you, anyone has anything else to, you know, any evidence that they do, um, please uh, let me know. So uh, there we go. Just that is going to be our bottom fins. And now that they are done being constructed, we can uh, construct the top fins, which are, in my opinion, the coolest part of the New Glenn rocket. So the or the fun, most fun part to build. So what we're going to be doing is taking the that rotational servo. I just use the smallest one, and then I did four-way symmetry on uh, the uh, top of the upper stage. These fins are what's going to really give us the uh, majority of our control during the booster's descent and landing. Um, so these boot what these uh, four do is uh, I have we'll, we'll eventually what we'll do is we'll have two of them set up to control our pitch and then two of them set up to control our roll. So uh, these actually do provide quite a bit of authority, especially in the upper parts of the or in the middle parts of the atmosphere, because there's kind of a sweet spot where you can really start to control yourself. Uh, and there's like enough air resistance where you're enough air that you can control yourself, but there's not too much air where it just kind of you know, like blocks you basically. I don't know if that really makes sense, but there we are just putting a uh, structural wing type D, I believe it is. Um, just testing the rotation and there it is. And now we're gonna be putting a delta wing on the top of it, a small delta wing, which we are going to heavily clip into the thing. And if you look at the uh, real new Glenn, uh, the, um, the fins, the way it works, it has like that little slanty bit on top, which is quite steep. And then it's a little bit less steep on the bottom. I don't know if that really makes sense, but you'll see uh, when I get to it. So like I said, you saw, I kind of angled the delta wing to make it a little bit more steeper. You can kind of just keep fiddling with this until you have something that you like. And then eventually uh, it should it should work um and then what you want to do is uh, you'll see in a second i grab a second delta wing uh which i will be mounting to the bottom of the um of the uh of the wing or the fin rather or the flap fin flap i don't know someone got mad at me because i called the called the starship flaps fins when they're flaps and not fins but either way um yeah so these want to be at a less steep angle or a steeper angle depending on what your reference point is they, you, 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 i think mean, i think you get the point so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate these just a little bit uh just so they can uh, look about a little more realistic um you want to make sure the you also want to probably clip the uh, delta wing or the entire thing into the a rocket just a little bit or else they're going to extend a little bit too far into a little too far out because they're not actually that big the fins and now you can see i'm doing a little bit of rotation test and what you also want to do is you want to if you can see if you rotate them all the way like that they kind of look really weird so you want to you're going to want to limit the angle of their rotation uh which is uh, what i believe i do here in a second another thing which i did forget to record is you're going to want to lower the um fins lower than what i have them right now because if you don't they could actually clip into the um 
the engine plate and they could cause a crack and attack when you try to decouple so yeah just keep that in mind so here i am going to be setting the uh, deploy limit here so i just set it to 35 degrees in either direction so minus 35 on the left side and then plus 35 on the right side so now what we're going to want to be doing is we're going to be uh, separating um I'm just doing a test. I want you're gonna I'm gonna want to be separating uh, the uh, pitch ones from the roll ones. So the two that are gonna be perpendicular to the airstream. So the ones that are parallel with the bottom fins. I think you can see what I. I think you know what I mean. Um, we're gonna want to take those and we're gonna want to remove those um, uh, from the symmetry. Uh, but before that, we are going to put some landing gear on, obviously. Can't go wrong. Nothing wrong with landing gear. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm um, recording this commentary post because I'm terrible at live commentaries. And I totally forgot I put the landing gear in right now. Um, so, yeah, this is putting in the landing gear. And then we do the, uh, we'll do the rotation of the fins in just one second. See, look at this professional quality that my let's do. Don't forget to subscribe, right? It seems like subscribe-worthy content. Um, so, yeah. Um, there we go, just fold them back into the fins, and that looks about good. Now we can go back to the fins and actually get back on track to what I was talking about. Um, so we want to um, open up that menu, and then we want to remove those two from symmetry, like I said. And then what we're going to want to do is go into the action group, so a little bit crossfade there. And we want to get these set up to the yaw axes, uh, not pitch, uh, uh, yaw. Uh, just, um, and then we're going to want to uh, hit target angle on both of those. And then, uh, do I do it? Do I do it? Do I do it? Um, it looks like I do that one first. So you want to take the arrows first of all. You want to have on the left one, you want the arrow to be pointing like off. You want the, and then on the right one, you want the pair to be pointing like on or like want the thing to be illuminated. And then make sure you see those little things right next to the arrows. You want to make sure those are in the flat position. You can kind of see um, me setting the roll up right now. You can see I just clicked them right there. You want those to look like that, basically. Um, that means uh, you will actually be able to, I think, better control it. I think I made sense. I don't know. Uh, just feel free to pause the video and just uh, take a look at what the um, what the action group look like if, you know, you're having a little, if you don't quite get it. So then you want to set up an action group to lock the, uh, or unlock, or toggle locked for the fins, um, because you don't want them activated during your launch. And then make sure, because you have the one, um, the fins removed from symmetry you actually have to make sure you click on both of them and toggle lock for both of them or else um one side is not going to uh, the action group won't affect one of the fins i don't know if that makes sense that, <laughs> i don't know if this is even making sense to anyone but uh now for the last few things you want to do is um uh put in our payload which is probably a good idea and then it's just yeah the payload and set up our staging and it's just the last few housekeeping items turn on uh, clamshell deploy if you want and reduce the sides to two and the ejection force all the way up force all the way up on the fairing if you want uh, that just makes the separation a little bit more realistic and now we're going to be putting on our little dummy payload it's just going to be like a kind of like a lander transfer stage whatever you be whatever you want obviously i'm just it's kind of just to simulate the mass so we're going to be putting a poodle engine in and then just a little bit of fuel and then a command pod and that'll be our little simulated payload and it fits quite comfortably in the uh in the fairing you can't uh, you probably can't fill the thing with like ore tanks um because the thing probably won't be able to make it into orbit but it can carry quite a bit of uh, payload uh, if you wanted to so that is going to be the um the uh, payload constructed um once i put some landing legs on i don't act we don't actually going to use the payload for anything it's just there just kind of a dummy payload um and then the last thing we're going to want to do is set up the uh, the staging. Um, so you want to just make sure in the bottom stage you have the uh, seven skipper engines, uh, like so. And then I uh, just put some launch clamps on because if you just let it start on that uh, fairing, it's going to not work because the fairing will just break and you'll explode. Um, so launch clamps, and you want the launch clamps in the same stage as the skippers, obviously. Or you can put the skippers uh, before the launch clamps if you want to like simulate throttling up the engines and then releasing them, which is totally a thing that I usually actually do. And then the second stage, um, you want to have like I showed it. Um, actually, you want to have it like I've showed it uh, in the launch because I accidentally in my build thing forgot to... Um, I forgot to remove the upper stage or the payloads engine from um, from the staging menu, so it, it caused crack and attack. So basically, if you want to look at the staging for the upper stage, just look at that, and that is uh, that is accurate. So now we're going to throttle up our engine, point radial out, and release the launch clamps, and there we are into the air. So I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse here. And then uh, what we basically want to do is you want to do a slightly steeper ascent profile with this rocket. Um, 
you're going to want to do that because when you what we're going to be doing with the second stage or the bottom stage rather when we detach it we're going to be doing a boost back burn so we're going to be flipping backwards and then um, going back to the Kerbal Space Center and you want um, the, the less horizontal speed you have the easier it is to do so you want to obviously do a pitch over but you don't want to pitch over too aggressively or else you're going to be using like all your fuel to do your boost back so it's less efficient that way so what I did with the booster is I kept firing it like normal until about a th until about it had about a thousand meters a second of delta V left, which you can see in the staging window on your left. Uh, on the left side is that blue thing right above the staging. And once it had a thousand meters a second of delta V, that is when uh, my cue was to uh, create a quick save by pressing uh, holding F5. And then uh, they are doing it right now. And then we can separate the upper stage. And what that means is um, because of the way KSP works, you can't actually, um, you can't obviously land the booster and recover the upper stage both. So we're kind of, it's kind of a little bit, you just have to pretend it works, right? Um, so we're going to be just getting the thing into orbit and then we're going to be doing the booster landing here. But no one really cares. It's, it's a basic rocket. You just fire in. Yeah, hey, look what you look at that. We're in orbit. Okay, well, let's get back to what you guys are actually here for. So the booster landing. So what we do is we turn on RCS and then we um, just help it flip on over backwards. You don't want to be um, flipping to retrograde. You want to be flipping uh, to... Um, you want to flip perfectly horizontal like you can see I am right now. And what's that going to do is that's going to... Um, cut all your horizontal speed because if you pointed retrograde that would also cut your vertical speed and you don't want to do that you just want to cut your horizontal speed so you want to watch your um you want to watch that uh, little arc thing that you have right now or your trajectory you don't actually want to put your trajectory on top of the ksc um, because this booster can is actually a really good glider so you really can you only need to put your trajectory just kind of a little bit forward as you can see right now like our trajectory right now is showing like we're going to land like completely in the middle of the ocean and not anywhere near the KSC. Uh, but you can see, there we go, just cutting. It's like our, we're like halfway is what its KSP is showing we're going to make it. So what we're going to do to actually extend our glide and get us all the way out to um, actually make it to the KSC. Um, this is obviously the most, e most efficient way to do things. You want to do as little engine burning as possible and you want to do as much of your slowing down and getting to the uh, destination with your um, with your fins and it just aerodynamically. So what we're going to do is we're going to also try and point as flat as possible and make sure you are oriented the way I am um, because or else your um, pitch fins will not be you know oriented the right way and you don't want that uh, obviously. So just orient the way I am with the um, uh, the bottom fins perpendicular or the bottom fins kind of flat to the air right or the flat bottom fins parallel to the ground so we're trying to maintain as close as possible to flat which is going to extend our glide as much as possible you can actually kind of see uh, you can kind of see a, see the rocket kind of like translating over it gets a little bit more difficult as we get to the lower atmosphere and once we get to the really low atmosphere we start to have a lot of control authority and we can kind of just tip point the rocket in whatever direction we want so we're going to be doing that to try and get as accurate of a landing as possible it's pretty tricky to get like perfectly uh on the ksc but you can get to just pretty generally close and it's it's not terribly hard to get there so you see we are now over the ksc and i'm going to drop it down to one time speed now it looks like we're coming in a little bit just short of the vab i'm um, just between the vab and the um uh, the uh, launch pad. So now it looks like our speed is already down to about 250 meters a second as we can fire up those engines. So we really only need the engines for the last few hundred meters a second. Like the other 800 we, we scrubbed off using uh, aerodynamically. So we're going to bring those landing gear out, firing those engines, and boom! We did it! Yay! That was a kind of a firm landing, but uh, hey. Uh, we made it down. So that is going to conclude the tutorial. So I hope you found that helpful. And uh, if you want to subscribe, I don't know, we'll put some cards up and stuff. So I'd like to thank you for watching. What's the next time? Please order a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. What's the next time? And bye.